everybody and welcome back to a brand new video today we are doing as you can see by the title we are doing a different kind of video we are not just standing in a random woods i'm standing in the woods behind my nana grandad's house which is where i get all my stick insect food from i don't have to worry about pesticides because there are no farms around this area i'm using gloves because brambles is very hard to get hold of and trust me i'm gonna need it when I've got secateurs and all of this kind of stuff. So, you're gonna join me. We are gonna go look, get some brambles for up my stick insects. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up one of my new stick insect enclosures. It's not new, but I'm gonna show you how I set it up. Today we'll be looking at Sungaya and Expectata, Eurocantha calcarata. We'll see you very soon, let's go. So, I'm here today and we are going to be getting some bramble. We are looking in the woods, we're just looking around for any different woodland brambles because that is what these species will live on. They will live on it fine and quite simply they will eat it, it will die, they'll use it to hide, blah blah blah, and I'll explain all that later. So let's get hold of some bramble. Where do we look? There's lots here, I will probably use all this, so let's go. So we have managed to get a small collection of bramble all here. I also got a big log with lots of different, uh, it looks like Christmas moss, but it's not Christmas moss, which I will be using. I'll be using some of it to go in there just to use a bit of dead wood. And the other bit, which mainly has all the moss in it, is going in a separate project, which I've got, which I can touch on while I'm in there. It's nothing major and I wasn't gonna do a video on it, but I'll do it anyway so I can show you what I'm doing. All right, we'll see you inside. We are now inside. So here's all the stuff I've got. And that's where it's all going to go. It's all going to go in there. I'll see you very, so very shortly. We are back in the actual animal rooms. And in front of me here, I have a big fish tank. It's got some cocoa fiber in it at the moment. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding, adding some of this stuff here. This is cocoa fiber. And what it's going to do is it's going to sit at the bottom of this enclosure, which is where the ovipositors will put eggs and stuff for some of the sticking sets going into here. I will get on to more of the stick insects that are going in here later, and I will do a big explanation on of the two species that can live together that are going in here. So all I've got to do now is I've got to add some more of this cocoa fiber into here just to make it uh, a little bit deeper so that I can put different things in here. And I'll explain what I put in after I've done the cocoa fiber. So let's, let's watch me put the cocoa fiber in, and then I'll get back to you in a sec. So, we have now just added the uh, cocoa fiber into this tank. Now, what this does, it gives it a small, soft, um, a, it gives it a soft substrate for the stick insects to lay uh, their over in. Over being the uh, technical term for stick insect eggs. Now, the two species that are going in here are Sungai inexpectata, the sunny stick insect, and Eurocantha calcarata, the thorny devil. Now, both of these species, the females have ovipositors. Now, ovipositors are where the stick insects deposit eggs, and um, a soft uh, cocoa fiber substrate makes that possible. It also uh, does well in humid environments, this substrate. Now, stick insects are obviously invertebrates, so they do shed. Now, to increase shedding and to um, have good molts after shedding, they need lots of humidity and that can come with um, lots of spraying of, and misting, which I do, and you should do for stick insects. And the soft cocoa fiber substrate will help increase the humidity as it is a soily substrate, which will increase the humidity. Now, they are a jungle species, uh, or two of two different Australian jungle species. Now, the two things to get, now things to add into here is stuff like this, which is leaf litter. It, they like to camouflage into this stuff and it also provides Eurocantha calcarata a place to hide as they are a very hidden species of stick insects. They like to stay amongst rocks and they like to stay amongst logs and dead leaves. They are also very, very dangerous to hold. Not dangerous because that you shouldn't hold them, but dangerous because they hurt if they touch you. And we will, I'll get onto it and explain why as to why later. 
But what all I'm doing is adding a little bit of this um, leaf litter that I've got on top of this cork bug. All I'm doing is just shaking it in and mixing it about so that they've got some spaces to hide and lay their eggs and feel more at home in a jungly substrate. Now, I have got cork bug. Now, for most stick insects, you don't need to do this. And when I do a video on my Cariusus morrisus or the Indian walking stick insect, my Ramulus nematodes and Artemis, when I do videos on them, guys, I won't be using this. This is cork bark. This is usually used in reptile enclosures. Now, like I said earlier, Eurocanthus calcarata like to hide in amongst logs and stuff. So using this is really good. And once I get some water pots ready, which I will put all the um, bramble that we got earlier, um, I will put that in the pots and then I will cover all the pots and stuff with bits like this for places for these to hide. And you will see them hopefully later that they will hide against this. So, without further ado, let us get to the water pots. So, we have now just filled up two pots of water, which I've got here. Now, you've got to be very careful when adding water into um, stick insect enclosures because it can damage the stick insect babies if they fall into there. Now, actually, let me, let me show you the other project I've got going on at the moment. Hang on. The other project I've got going on is this little terrarium here. So now it's got loads of different plants and stuff. It does need to be watered today, actually. But it's all in here and it's all very damp and it's all growing. You've got ferns, you've got some other plants, you've got petunias, everything like that. So the, the Java moss log thing is probably just going to sit in here when it, so that when it gets watered and stuff, it all gets added into there. So here's, here's the actual Java log that I've got. So it's got moss on this end, which is the bit that's going to go in. And this bit here, the broken part, which has got a little bit of moss on it, is going to go in with the uh, in the stick insects because of the Eurocanthus. They can use that to hide and they'll probably try and eat it as well. So that's going to be very beneficial. So now all I will be doing is I will get these water pots here like this and I will just add lots of the different um, brambles that we've got and I'll put it in there and yeah. And then I will get on to showing you the stick insects. So you're going to see a quick time lapse of me putting all this into these two different pots here that I have. And it's going to make it look nice. And then I will add the cork bug and then we'll add the stick insects. And I'll give you a little bit of a creature feature on the different stick insects that are going in there. So let's see you in a sec. See, I have done some of the pots, and now the pots are quite tall, so hopefully they will just slot in in different points of here, just like so. So I will see you so once it's done. Here is the enclosure without any of the cork bucket. It's got the log here, but this is it without all the cork bucket. Now, normally that would be fine, but Eurocanthus need cork bark. So what we're going to do is I'm going to quickly add this, and then I will get onto the sticking sex. So there we have it. There we have the forest scape looking for the Eurocanthus calcaratas. Now, what I'm gonna do is I will take you step by step on the different species I've got, and then I will add them in, and then I will turn the lights all back on, and then you will see it properly. So I won't be very long. So, today the first species we're gonna be looking at is Eurocanthus calcarata, which I have four of these, fairly sub-adult. Now, these are a very dangerous species of, uh, species of stick insect. They tend to be quite aggressive. Now, the one in my hand currently is a female, and you can tell because of this pointy end here. This is the ovipositor. This is how you know it is a female, because the ovipositor is usually pointed, and that's what they put in the substrate to deposit the ova from this bit here. This is a fairly docile, oh, sorry, love. This is a fairly, ah, I say fairly docile, and then it starts having a freak. But this is a fairly docile female. She's a sub-adult, and they don't get very big. They get about this bit, they get to about this big. So, her full body, and then to my fingers, they get a little bit bigger. But, they're not very uh, interesting at this stage. Now, the reason they're called the thorny devil is, yes, as you can see, they have small spikes all along them. But, they really get that name from the males of this species. Now, this is going to be a very difficult task. Now, I have four of these. Three of them are female. Okay, we're going to let you just chill. 
we'll just let you chill on the side here, love. Now, Eurocantha are an ornamental species. They don't like to be handled. This is an appropriate way to pick up insects by their sides, but it is fine. Now, look, if you look here, that there, that black spike there, is a thorn. If that pinches you, it hurts. I mean it, it hurts. I've had it happen to me. People have seen it happen to me and it hurts. The difference between these, there is no overpositor. That's how you know it is a male. That and because you can see the thorns on its back. When this gets to full adult size, which obviously these guys are not full adult size, they go dark brown when they get adult size. Uh, those thorns nearly triple in size. They are sharp and they are big. So this here is Eurocantha calcarata. And these are the species that like to hide in all the logs and stuff. Now the next species is a fairly simple species. Fairly standard. They're probably the next easiest second to what people know as the laboratory stick insect. Um, Sungaya inexpectata. Now, they're all trying to get out as I open it. But here we have the Sungaya inexpectata. Not much different between the two species, but once again, females, where are you? Females have an ovipositor. Please don't try and climb on my face. This is a female, they are also from Australia. This is a sunny stick insect. And then you get two types, you get highlands, which are slightly more white, and then lowland, which are brown, like these ones. I have, most of these are lowlands, but I have two blondes, so I do have two highlands in there. Now, these guys are not dangerous at all. You can put, you can handle these quite easily. Again, once again, you can hold them at the sides to move them about a bit easier. And there, I have 25 of these ones, two of which are obviously the highlands, and they these two species can coexist because these guys also like a bit of wood in their enclosure. So, without further ado, let us add. Actually, no, we're going to plug everything in first and then I will add the stick insects to show so here you. Here we have it. Here is the enclosure. As you can see, the light is now on. So we are now ready to put stick insects in. Let's go. And so here we have the final product. So you've got a sun guy here, a sun guy here, a sun guy here. This is one of the highland ones, actually. Another sun guy, another sun guy. Then we've got sun guyas, a male and a female paired together there. That's a urocanther. That's another urocanther. See, straight on the logs and stuff down there. But in general, this is one of my sticky sex setups. You've got urocanthers there. You've got some more urocanthers, some sun guys. There's three sun guys there, actually. And then there is actually a little baby here, there, just there, that is a nymph, that is a Sungaya nymph. Um, he had his own separate pot, just because, why not? But yes, here is my stick insect, and ah, this is an, this is an interesting behaviour, you see here, this stick insect is swaying like that. That is the stick insect dance, that is to mimic the wind. When they're hanging on leaves and branches, if they do that, it mimics the wind as a part of their camouflage. It's a really interesting uh, behaviour. I hope you have enjoyed learning a little bit about Sungai and Expectata and Eurocanthic Alcarasa. These are two of my stick insects I own. I do own more, which are down here. I own Euro uh, Cariusus morosus. I own Ramulus artemis, uh, Ramulus nematodes. I will be owning Extatosoma tiaratum, um, Pseudophasma fulvum, all kinds of different species. And I will be doing individual um, phasmid videos on them all. I may even do a small video on this fish tank. I may even do a small video on that fish tank. In the, in the axolotls, the beardy, the leopard gecko, all kinds of animals. I will be doing them all slowly but surely. It just takes a little while for me to be able to do it all properly and get all the things put together for it. So, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you very soon for more content like this. And stay tuned for Bantam Tea. See you later. Bye.